Right, so we're here in Tyler at a protest for women's rights. Yes. And what's your name? Dana. Dana. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Elena. Elena. All right. My name's Avery. And what brings you guys out here today? My body, my choice. Very all people, not just white people. Yes. And what about you? Find your own universe, and I'm here fighting for my daughter's rights and mine. Ellie and I helped to organize this, but to put it more simply, because I fucking care about women's rights. Equality. Equality? Yeah, human, okay. Basic human rights. They're banning my rights to my body and so many friends of mine, and I think that's really fucked up. You hold them? Hold it up. Hold it up. Scream it loud. out and use their voice, what would you say to encourage them? Fear is everywhere. I mean, it drives all of us, but turn that into passion. Passion can drive hatred, passion can drive love, let it be the latter, and always, always, always know you can talk to someone about it. It's hard to put yourself out there and to try to make a change if it feels like it's not really going to do anything, but if you don't stand out there, no one else will either. And then nothing's gonna change. So we all need to we all need to group together and use our voice. Well and it's like you think, you know, it won't start with one person, this literally started with one person. Mm -hmm. And then look at all this year. So exactly. So a little bit can go a long way. Don't be afraid because the more quiet we stand, the more they'll take advantage. I love you no matter what and you are loved and if you ever need a safe place, we all we all support each other. <laughs> Keep your religion out of my universe. We love you, why don't you love us? I think that we're going back to like the 1970s and aren't we supposed to be about moving forward, not going backwards? Why are we allowing old men to choose what we do with our bodies? They can't even fucking birth them. Okay? No, they don't. They don't birth them. They don't them. understand half of the pain we have to go through. This is our 72nd episode of Putting the Paint in Painting. Today, we have flown through environments, landscapes, figures, animals. We have done it all at this point. We are going to start working on some perspective figures within the landscape. So we are mashing our knowledge together today. We're gonna work on this marvelous woman. As you can see, we have a pre-painted canvas. Whoever did this, they did such a wonderful job. It looks gorgeous. She's crawling amongst the hills. She looks to be a giant woman. A giant woman crawling amongst the hills. Something bright might be on the other side of this hill, uh, based on the uh, lighting there. We have a beautiful sunrise. Just classic colors. The sky is somehow green, and uh, I don't know why, but uh, I think we're gonna work with it. We're gonna work with it. I'm loving these hills. They remind me of the Lonely Plains. As you can see, this is a female figure. Um, you can tell by the top region of her chest. But no one, no one should be afraid of a ta-ta. 
let's all remain calm, okay? This is purely art. We're gonna grab two sections of white, one section of pewter, right? It's a little burn. It pooted. <laughs> Maybe this just means something else is needed. We're gonna grab our arbor green. Satanism. Satan. Satanism. 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 I am a Satanist. Does that make you instantly want to click off this video? Does that make you look at me and think, she sacrifices the children to Lucifer Baphomet. Go Ted. Demon Satan. We're going to start with a fun fact and I'm going to tell you that 63% of the United States population is Christian. If you want to sit here and try to convince me that that doesn't influence politics in any sort of way, I want to um, just give you a good stare for a minute. Okay, and now try to um, try to explain yourself in the comments, please. Sixty-three percent. That is a lot of people. That is a lot of Christians. And you know, there are good Christians out there. I think that Christianity itself is not terrible. Okay, I grew up in the South. I went to church when I was a child. I had a mima and a papa. I understand the Bible. I understand the whole religion. I do. And I still rejected it. I am not a Satanist. I want to say that for the record. That's not my actual religion. I would actually classify myself as a spiritualist. But I did have someone say that they were a Satanist to me recently. The conversation went a little bit like this. We were talking about tattoos. This was my husband. Oh my gosh. Your tattoo is so amazing. When do you want to get your next one done and what do you want to get done? I was really looking into, I was really looking into a symbol for Satanism. You want your second tattoo to be a devotion to Satanism? Well, yeah, I'm a Satanist. I've told you this. I guess I always just thought that it was a joke. And now that you're actually fully dedicating yourself to this religion in front of my face, I have to do some research because my automatic thought is that you killed it. So yeah, it went a little something like that. Um, the next few days, I devoted my time to researching Satanism. It turns out that the scrutiny on Satanism is actually, and of course it was, it was actually derived from a bunch of Christians being scared of a movie. No, 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 no. A book. How many great disasters and how many, like,
terrible things can you think of that happened because one person believed one thing so hard and didn't think to consider anyone else's perspective or anyone else's belief? I think that if we all just practice empathy, the world will be a better place, okay? But I'm just sitting here in my living room. Back in the 1980s, I believe, yeah. It was the 1980s or something. There was this book release called Michael Remembers and it was about this satanic cult that took women and children or whatever in another country. But the um, people of some community, they really got scared and they, um, they tried so hard to get this one daycare convicted of child abuse and other counts. And they actually did, su they didn't succeed at that one, but it, that one is what made the entire satanic panic happen. I think a lot of people need to be educated. A lot of people need to be educated and they need to consider reality. They were even teaching cops how to identify Satanists and where to keep an eye out for them. Like Satanists were running rampant. But like satanic cults, okay? Sa Satanists are running rampant, okay? They're everywhere. But satanic cults that use children I don't think that's what's happening here. I think that, um, just come back. So what is Satanism? Baphomet is actually derived from the Gospel of Matthew, which says, Jesus will separate the sheep from the goats on judgment day. So the goat represents the defiers of Jesus and his teachings. I would like to argue that Satanism is a branch of atheism because they both don't believe in a God. They believe in personal liberation and personal religious freedom and freedom in general. Having the freedom to be yourself and believe what you believe and love who you want to love. It actually baffles me to sit here and think some people don't believe in any sort of magic. Everything is just so specifically perfect for us for no reason on this earth. I encourage you to do your own research on Satanism. Don't get all of your information from this one video and take it and be like, oh, okay, go and do your own research, please. Right now, the Satanic Temple is advocating for women's rights. They're advocating for Christian clinics in the name of religious freedom. Look into it. Swashmortion is a very heavy topic and maybe that's something that we should get into in the comments. However, I think that every woman should have the freedom to choose what to do with their own body. Every individual person should have the choice with their body. Back to Todd Slush. <laughs> and we're gonna add our little tree branches. Did I say tree branches? I meant tree stems, tree logs. You're gonna grab a little bit of that arbor green and just tap 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 Keep grabbing some more arbor green until it looks all good. You know, you know? You know, you know. Don't worry if you start spreading your brown around, you know. Trees are trees are pretty wild things. I'm gonna get a little wild. Seems like we forgot a bark on my little friend here. Just add that on there, get some more arbor green, and ba -ba 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 -ba. oops. A little too much brown, hey? It's all right. Got a little excited, got a little 
little too happy with my brush there. But, uh, oh, did it again. Got a little too happy with my brush. It's all right. I'm gonna just go ahead and paint over. We've completed our horses, one in the distance and one in the foreground, and our sun. It's time to finally get to the part that we've all been waiting for, adding a head on this woman. And today, I have a very special head that's going on this body for you. It's actually something that doesn't even exist. How magical is that? Just give me one second here. Alstromeria, a flower grown in Peru, but naturally located in Chile and Brazil. This flower only comes in shades of orange, red, pink, white, yellow, and purple. It doesn't come in shades of blue, sadly, and that's the color of the flower I wanted to paint for my painting, so we are going to create it. We're going to create a blue alstromeria based on a reference. I didn't know this beforehand, but this flower represents mutual support and friendship. While each individual color has its own meaning, they all root back into the symbol of friendship. Another name for this flower is Lily of the Incas, and I was I just love that name, so that's the name of the painting now. So here we go. Just add those little babies on there. You can make them big or little. Whatever size you like. Bye-bye.